No, it's your boy Oskino Vasquez, man. I'm reading 24-7, man. Real magazine, man. If you ain't got this, you ain't got nothing. Let's jump right into it. You know, it's, it's been a while since you know, we got them been together. Mm-hmm. Um, so what is it like being back together with the whole team? I mean, you know, we did it for so long that even though, you know, it's been a while, we, we ain't been together. We, well, we actually was together before this a couple times, but it's just natural. It's like brothers. Like, I mean, we all been together for over 15 years. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's natural. It's like you going with your cousin you ain't seen in a long time. So you know each other so good that it just feel natural when y'all could become or go around each other like you know I mean. Okay. So you know, with it being so long and you haven't had a project out, mm-hmm. uh, what what is the anticipation like with you finally how y'all getting back together trying to make it happen? Well, I mean, we all have been doing individual stuff. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't like everybody was just sitting around. But a couple of us went to prison. Like I went to the penitentiary for a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? But. Uh, you know, I just shot a movie too called Two Hundred. So we all be doing work in it, but when they, we come together, it's a bigger situation. You know what I mean, when you by yourself, you do your little thing, whatever, whatever. But I mean, the way the rap game is now, it's it's easy. But, you know what I mean, I think especially with the internet and all that, it's just easy. I think we could bust a move out easy. You know what I mean, you see, we in Chicago, right? You know what I mean, right now, without nothing, I mean, we had the last CD we dropped was ten years more, like ten years ago. You know what I mean? So you know. So that being said, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a lot of artists that haven't been out in a while, when they come out, they sound like trying to sound like... No, we're not doing that. So, no, we never would do that. So, so yeah, Plus, the, the city we from is hard. You feel me? It's not a lot of rappers from Philly. You know what I mean? You, 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 it ain't, you know, like, say Chicago might got more rappers than Philly got. You know what I mean? Philly don't got a lot of rappers. You know, we had Will Smith. You know, he, in the 80s. You know, we had Schooly D. Then we had Eve and Beans. And they had us. Then that, that, that was Meek Mills. You know, he came out about 10 years after us. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to make it in Philly. But we are Philly. You mean? Each of us from a different part of Philly. You know what I mean? And where we from, we like, the man, you know I mean? Everybody loves us. You know what I'm saying? We the people that they looked up to that made it out of Philly. You know what I mean? That, that's from the hood. Like, you know I mean? So we would never try to sound like the people that's out now. That's not, you know what I mean? That's, that's, people that do that, they only have our identity. I mean, so they trying to just do whatever to make money or whatever. I mean, no, we never do that. Okay. Now, what you're saying with the Philly sound and how hard it is to make that again? Uh, and, and speaking on me, you know, the situation we had with Drake, mm-hmm. you know, you know, everybody said he came weak with that, with that diss. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you feel about the situation? About his diss record? Yeah. I mean, I didn't like it because I know he rapped better than that. You know, I know him. You know, Meek was with me. He's 16, 17, 18, whatever. You know, I'm one of the first people that, you know, that knew Meek had talent, you know what I mean, before anybody knew him. So I know what he's capable of. I know he could have came better than that. I mean, but at the end of the day, man, his, man, his relationship is a little deeper than just music, you know what I mean? So, you know, as a person that just don't know him and I see him, like, oh, what you doing? Because everybody expected more, you know what I mean? But it's music. You know, he did it, he did it. He made a mistake. I mean, but it ain't that. I mean, I think the way that the internet and all that stuff is now, news go by so fast, it be over. You know, when it was first happening, it was big news. Now you barely, you know, nobody even, you know what I mean, think about it no more. Every week is something different. Every week is something different. So, you know, and I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay. You know, y'all, y'all made a major impact back in your time. Mm-hmm. And I know when, uh, when the label separated, all y'all had to, you know, made a decision on what side y'all was going to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, so what is your relationship like now personally between Dame and Jay? Well, I don't have a relationship with Jay-Z. Dame is like, I look at Dame as family, you know what I'm saying? So we real tight, like, I mean, that's why, you know, we just did, I just did a movie called Too Honorable with him, you know what I mean? That's like a person I can call if I want to just talk to about anything, you know what I'm saying? That's like my family, like, you know what I mean? It's been a long time, you know, I've been around him for 16 years since I was 21. I mean, we had, a, I mean, when I was younger, I, I ain't like him because the way he used to talk and I used to come talk to him. You know, he was, you know, as I grew up getting older, get to talk to him, understand why he do what he do. And then he just real, whatever he say he do. You know what I mean? He a real person. Like, he a real dude. I mean, a lot of people don't know him. They looking from the outside and they say this, say that. But everything he say he do. You know what I mean? So I got a lot of respect for him. A lot. And I met a lot of people in this industry. 
And I think I got more respect than him than anybody. For him than anybody. For me. Okay. Um, you know, state property sound is, is a sound that's hmm. it's, it's classic. Yeah. So, um, with all y'all getting back together. Well, we're not necessarily saying that we're getting back together. Well, you mean? On the new projects, we yeah. say. This new project. Mm -hmm. um, what can we expect from it? I mean, I don't think it would sound like the last CD we made. I mean, because you got to remember, the last CD we made, we was younger. I mean, we've been recording, all of us been recording every day. I, mean, I got my own studio. So, of course, we're not going to sound the same as we did then. We going to sound different, but we won't sound like nobody else. I mean, so, you know, we probably got better vocabulary, but we've been through more. So, you know, to be a little different, to be a little more advanced than before. Well, I know to be better than the shit that's out now. The shit that's out now is trash. And that was my next question. You know, how do you feel about a lot of the artists? Shit, trash. And this is my thing. I would never diss somebody that's out taking care of their family. It's just my opinion. I remember when I was coming up in rap, you had to be have lyrics. You had to have a topic. You had to have, you know, it was serious. Your lyrics was something serious that you would be like, damn, I can't say this. You were erasing 90% of your shit. You know what I mean? you like, but now it's just like, you say any fucking thing. Like, anything you say is just fly. I mean, you could just do it. Matter of fact, people don't even really got to understand what you're saying. And it can still come out and be successful. And I never knock it because I know how hard it is for black people, period. So anybody that's doing what they're doing, they're successful at it, I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? But just as a fan of the music, something that I kind of dedicated my life to, I'm like, ah, oh, what the hell is this? You know what I mean? So, you know, but I, I love seeing black people do anything. Like, I mean, I'm really pro black boy. Like, I'm talking about hard. Like, you know I mean, because I know how bad we got it. I don't care what state you from, what city you from, no, no matter what time, they still look down on us. You know what I mean? So if it's a black dude, if he's even if I don't like his music, he he's successful doing what he's doing, I applaud it. You know what I mean? Okay. So do you think a lot the industry is trying to dumb down our our culture? I don't even think it's the industry, I think it's the youth is just dumbed down. It's people that's, I mean, the industry only go by what the fans accept. You know what I'm saying? So with the people accepting that. I know my time, a lot of people that's out there won't even been able to get a record deal at all. Like, period. Like, what the fuck is this? But you know, times change, stuff change. Then I ain't the type of dude just be like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't deal with this music. It's terrible. I just be like, I try to understand it. I really, I mean, I really can't. But, you know, my sons like some of this stuff. You know what I mean? It is, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Okay. So, you know, considering y'all have stood the test of time and, you know, or I said was any other gender uh, generation that, that's out again, that's soaring, and making it again. How does it feel to be able to be a pioneer in the game and still be able to do it? Years it feel good, man. I mean, it feel real good because a lot of people that's in the game. I mean, I, I know it's a lot of cities that's rough and it's tough. You know what I'm saying? But we come from a super rough city. You know what I'm saying, so it's a blessing that we even alive. Period. You know what I'm saying? Because you know. I mean, I me personally, you know, I've been shot ten times myself personally. You know what I'm saying? Locked up for murders and all that type stuff. I mean, it's like you could be a rapper in Philly, but it don't matter. It ain't like nobody gonna be like, oh, you're a rapper, I ain't gonna do nothing to you. That's gonna make them do something to you even more. You know what I mean? So for you to earn your respect, it's like you gotta do a little more than just be tough. You gotta talk to people, you gotta carry yourself a certain way, you gotta do a lot of stuff, you know what I mean? So for us to even be here, period, it's just a blessing, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, seriously, really. You know what I mean? And then for all of us to be here and be able to get along and be cool. I mean, we all been, a couple of us been through stuff with each other. You know what I'm saying? But for us to be able to be in a room, don't worry about that stuff. And it's nothing that serious and be all brothers. I mean, that's a blessing too. You know what I mean? Uh, how's Freeway doing right now? I don't know. We, I mean, we didn't talk to Freeway because I guess he was getting seen by the doctors or whatever. But he put a picture up on Instagram today. He looked like he was doing good. He had a robe on and smiling and said, you know, thanks for all the prayers and stuff. You know what I mean? But, you know, we, as soon as we don't go back to Philly, we just go to the hospital and go see him. You know what I mean? So. And, uh, you know, Beans just. Got shot. Right. But I got, like I was saying, like, I mean, you know, it's real. I mean. But a lot of, this is the thing. I, this is the thing. Okay. Now, this music for dancing and music for stuff. We always made music for, like. People that's going through stuff. Like, I mean, like stories, like stuff that means. And, and no matter what generation it is, people always going through the same stuff. Same people with poor. Same people moms getting high. Same people getting shot. Same people trying to figure out where I'm going to get money from. So people will listen to that. It might not be on the, the video or the radio, but it's people that going to take that music and be like, 
damn, it's like they're talking about me. You know what I mean? That's why when we first came out, we sold 300,000 like in the first couple of weeks with no video. Just because people are like, oh shit, like they talking about some stuff that I can relate to. You know what I mean? And that's everywhere. You know what I mean? So I just think that it's relatable music. I think it's just something that it'll always sell. So do you think we're actually, with all of the dance music that's going on, we're actually reaching a point where we're getting back to the, the conscious? I think so, because, you know, at the same time, like, you know, far, far as flavor, like I think PD got, can make some super crazy dance music, like, you know what I'm saying? Because he got that that flavor like that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we could still make that type, but, you know, I think our thing was people looked at us as telling us what's going on in the streets, for real, from a, you know, because people could tell if you're really saying it from experience or if you're just saying it, like, you know what I mean? I think that's our niche, like, telling, like, you know, about, you know, what's going on and, like, you know, people, like, like for instance, a story about maybe a guy that's trying to get a job, he's got out of the prison, he can't get a job, but he wanted to do right, he refused to go to jail, so he went from, Getting selling bricks and now you work at McDonald's. You know what I mean? A story like that. And it's somebody that's like that. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people like that that I know personally. Ain't nobody saying nothing like that in the music business. Period. But you just gotta say it in a way that's entertaining. And I think we know how to do that. You know what I mean? All right, so being that, you know, Philly's a rough area, you, mm -hmm. know, you got poverty, you got crime, same <clears throat> as any other yeah. urban uh inner city, the youth, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with the police and things of that nature. Like being that y'all are so close to Baltimore, like how do you feel about the current state of the U.S. and, and the race relationship? <laughs> the funny thing is this, man. The stuff that's going on, I think it's not even as worse as it used to be in the 90s as far as the cops killing people. It's just that there's cameras now. And it's just that it's like they're getting caught doing it. I mean, because like, you know, I got a lot of friends got killed by the cops that didn't even make the... All the cops say anything. Or he pulled this out. Or, like my man got killed by the cops. He had a hot sausage. But it was in the aluminum foil you in his car. You know what I mean? So they come up on his car, they just start shooting in the car. They didn't give him a chance to, to pull out a license or nothing. They say, oh, we thought it was a gun. That's it. I mean, you can look probably look it up. They kill hundreds of people every year. Like, I mean, they kill people like crazy. And it's less now than it used to be because of the cameras. You know what I mean? But you know, the cops are always mostly white. You know what I mean? Mostly racist. Don't lie. Lie about what you did. I mean, we used to it. I mean, like, people that's not really in the streets might be looking like, oh, shit, I can't believe it's going on. But people that know, like, oh, it's not even a big deal. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I always hated it. And you said he had a sausage as in, like, a... A hot sausage, sandwich. but it was wrapped in aluminum for you. So when he walked up on his car, they seen it, you know, because it was nighttime. They seen it and just shot it in the car. They, I mean, they just shot it up. You know, cops still work. Got suspended for maybe with pay for about a week. Let me tell you what they did to my man Hawk. I got his name tattooed on my on my arm. They shot Hawk at a cop. He would just start being a cop. He was like a probably first year, maybe a rookie or whatever. They shoot my man Hawk in the head because he run. You know, he just ran. He was selling drugs. He was selling drugs. He run. They shoot him in the head. Boom. The cop panicked. He left. He didn't call in into nothing. He left. A person saw him do it. So they say, yo. A cop shot him. They're like, what? Mind you, this seven hours later, he was off duty. He went home, he went back to the base, went home. He ain't never say that he did it. The girl called and said, yo, he, 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 a cop, she had the cop card, you know, the, the number that be on the side of the card. Yeah, he shot, he shot uh, the guy. So he said, why you leave? Said, oh, I panicked. Why you panicked? You know, well, nothing happened to him. He got suspended. Mm -hmm. We, he back, still a cop. You know what I mean? So it's nothing I really could see. And this was my close friend. This is like somebody that I love. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know I mean? The cops, there's nothing they do will surprise me. You know what I mean? So what, what are some things that we can do to kind of curb the situation and get into a better place as a people? Because we've been struggling a long time. So what happens from this point into the future? I mean, right now, I think them even talking about it is a big start because they wasn't even talking about it until recently. I mean, even after Roger King got beat, they wasn't really talking about it. Nobody wasn't really talking about it to nails because it's coming back in the back and it's getting caught on camera. So I think we're going in the right direction. And plus, people, I got five sons myself. Like, I mean, you got to talk to your kids about, and I mean, it's a shame, but you got to talk to them about how to, how to interact with the police. You got to let your sons know, like, listen, no matter what they do, for that minute, they right. Like, even if you did right and they did wrong, you got to let them be right. You got to show them respect or they'll kill you. I mean, they really kill you, I mean, and then the crazy part, they kill you and nothing will happen to them. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the number one thing. Talk to your sons. The second thing is do exactly what we're doing now. You know what I mean? Fighting and having that evidence. 
You know what I mean? Like they gave the boy moms what Freddie Gray six million. I mean, this fast and they they've been killing people forever. They never did that. And once money involved, that's when people start saying, "Oh no, you know the city ain't gonna cheat trying to pay out no millions." Like that's when it's, I think the money always make a difference. You know what I mean? That's when the politicians like, "Oh, we not gonna be keep y'all not gonna be keep doing this." You a cop, but you know six million, six million that come out the city. You know what I mean, so I think that's I think money will change it. People sue, you kill them, you get a lawsuit, get the cop. Ever, you know, that's when it, that's, that's why they're wearing the body cameras now. That'll help. You know, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's going to take a long time. It's going to probably be in our lifetime when white cops don't hate us. You know what I mean? They they just hate us because they don't understand us. They're not from our neighborhood. They don't, you know what I mean? And they be scared. They they really be scared. You know what I mean? You can tell when they pull you over. They be scared to death. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? I'm a scared person to do anything. You know what I mean? Um, so speaking, you know, we, we're talking about, you know, race relations and things of that nature. A lot of, you hear a lot of people say, well, if black lives matter, then they should matter to black people as well as white people. Now, my thing is I always say, well, we have to go to the root of the issue, which in a lot of cases is white supremacy. So black people wouldn't be killing each other. and A lot of stuff wouldn't be happening if we weren't pushed into the place we're in by white supremacy. So what's your take on that? I mean, it's so deep. Like, I mean, like, everybody know what they did to black people. Everybody know white people got hundreds of years head start, hundreds of years here start no money, everything. I mean, they did. Because they, they try to say, like, all right, for instance, my dad born 1940, right? His dad born 1910. So, I mean, all that stuff direct directly affect people now. It ain't like it happened. I mean, it happened a long time, but it's directly affect people. They couldn't get money. They couldn't leave no money for their kids. They couldn't do, I mean, so when they look at the stuff we doing, I can't, I mean, I know they know why we doing it. They try to act like they don't, but they know where a lot of us is lost. I mean, because I know I was super, music saved my life. You know what I'm saying? I started writing music in the penitentiary. I went to adult prison at 16. I was a, wow. You know, I had, my dad was dead. My mom smoked crack. I mean, I had no nobody. And that was a lot of my friends was like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, I didn't even really know no white people until I was about grown. You know, my neighborhood is really all black, Puerto Rican. Ain't only whites is the cops. You know what I mean? So I never, until I read this book called Before the Mayflower, I never even really knew about slavery like that until I was about 17. I thought about slavery as something that may have happened a thousand years ago. I thought it was like something that's kind of exaggerated, kind of fake. But when I read it, I was like, damn, I see why they say ignorance is bliss. Because this type of stuff, you don't even want to know, especially if you can't do nothing about it. You know what I mean? So, you know, the white people got everything. They got all the money, all the power, you know what I mean? All the resources, and we just here. And it's like they don't like us to be here. You know what I mean? So we're going to have to take like probably 400, 300 years to catch up. You know what I'm saying? One by one. And another thing, black people don't stick together. You know what I'm saying? But do you, you do believe that it can happen, though? Yeah, I think anything possible. And I think it's happening now. You know what I mean, because all it is is about the kids. You know what I mean, the kids. And a lot of and what's gonna happen though? Really, what's gonna happen? A lot of kids is not racist. Like a lot of white kids and a lot of black kids go to school together. They cool. They like what? You know what I mean, so it's starting. To, it's getting watered down every generation. It's getting watered down. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta remember, a lot of the cops are just white dudes. You know what I mean that want to be in the army, want to be this. So it ain't like all white people. It's just these bad dudes with these guns. The cops. You know what I'm saying? You know, I would say the average white person don't really hate black people. I would think. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm gonna say it that, but the ones that do really empower, like judges, police, district attorneys, you know what I'm saying? And they they the ones that can stick it to us. You know what I mean? So we gotta get into the politics. And then you know, black people don't get no politicians and no money. You know what I'm saying? Chinese give them money, Indians give them money, and that's who they gonna have their interest in. And, Whoever give them that money to go run campaign. Blacks don't got money to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like we gonna be working at a job, they're gonna take our check, they're gonna give, you know what I'm saying? So we at the disadvantage in every way. You know what I mean? So we going a little deep, you know what I mean? I'm gonna bring it back to I'm bring it back I mean, but it's real music. though, because that affects us way more than anything else. Music, that shit is for real. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Okay, so in reference to the music. Do you think the music is actually being a, a a real strong influence on the youth today in the way? Music that always an influence on the youth, always. I mean, because I remember when Biggie was out, like everything he said, I wanted to do. You know what I mean, 
everything he said. I wanted he the reason why I rap. Biggie Smalls, like you know what I'm saying? Like when he brought out that ready to die and he the stuff he the songs he was singing, they they feel like they was talking to me. Like that's why I said, like state property. Like when you say, like, you know, I know how to fill a wake up, fucked up, pockets broken. So when he's saying that shit, I'm like, damn, what do you know my life? Like, you know what I'm saying? So I automatically went, even though he's from New York, I went straight to him. Like, that's my favorite. That's too, you know what I'm saying? And that's the type of stuff when you go and do despair and you hurting. You know what I mean? Because a lot of times these rappers, like now, all they talk about is money. Bentleys. A lot of people, most people can't get that. So, you know, a person that really uh, 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 relate to something that's real more than they relate to that. And I understand you saying that sometimes. You get money, you want to talk, brag about it. But I think the other stories is way more, you know, more relevant. You know what I mean? But the music definitely influenced the youth. In every way. How, how do you feel about the, those artists that's out here claiming that they they bang in and all that, but they really never even had that back? I think it's terrible. I think it's terrible. I think it's terrible because they influence people to really do it, and really out here doing it. Especially in these, like cities like this, where they you know like my city ain't really too much gang activity like that. You know people just killing people, people just because you know different situations. But out here you know it's really a serious like they got gangs and. You know what I mean, so you know, people see they rapper doing it, blood, and they want to do it. I mean, that's if that's if you're not doing it, I, I don't think you should be doing that, man. You know what I mean, you know, like maybe like you know, like little Wayne's and all, like you know, little Wayne been rapping since he was 11. I can't see how he could be a blood. You know what I mean, you've been not getting money for a long. You know what I'm saying? You've been a successful rapper and all that. I don't see how you could be a blood and influence people to do that. But you know, to each his own, man. So you know, speaking of Wayne, you know, Wayne's going through a situation with with Birdman at the moment. And we've seen a lot of the, you know, cash money was a big powerhouse at the same time, you know, Rockefeller mm -hmm. and you guys were. It's like now you've seen a lot of them break up and, you know, go separate ways and things of that nature. Like what actually happened once the split happened and then Jay and Dame went elsewhere? Because you said that you and Dame have a great relationship, but you and Jay-Z don't have one at all. Mm -hmm. So how did that work out in reference? I don't know. I just always like you know because at the time when I was young, so I always went with a person I could talk to. I mean, it wasn't about the music because you know we still was doing our shows and getting booked and doing stuff like that. But that's the person I felt comfortable with. You know what I mean, you gotta remember when you young, you know you you know you come from the streets. You don't have no father, no uncles, and nothing like that. You got a male figure that's doing something positive. You can talk to. You gravitate towards that person. You know what I mean, so it's get a little deeper than just music. You like yo, I can call you. You know, you know he. And it's like, it was real deep, so I really didn't pick Dane because you know I picked him because it was a, as a as a person. You know what I mean, as a something that I was looked at, I looked up to him. You know what I mean, the way he treated me, the way he kept his word, he was like a a real OG. Like you know what I'm saying, so it was like it was just no brainer for me. It wasn't about where I can go to be more successful or nothing like that. It was just like oh, this is the person I can talk to, and I'm going through something. You know what I mean, because a lot of black young boys don't got that. I mean at all. It's nobody they can really call. They really going through, even if they saying they got girl problems. There's nobody can really call to be like, yo, I'm going through with my girl, I don't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? And I know that from personal experience. Like, there's nobody you can call be like, yo, what? you don't even know what to do, so you're just trying to figure out things on your own. So if you come across somebody that you feel like you can talk to, whatever like that, you kind of gravitate to him, you know what I mean? Okay, so you looked at him as like a big brother type. You know? Yeah. Um, he was talking about his, his, his son in a recent interview a couple months back, and he's talking about passing along the wealth and the generations. Mm -hmm and actually building wealth and being a boss. And a lot of people kind of took that the wrong way and it was a big old debate on- Why did they take that the wrong way? Because of the way Dame's approach and the way he speaks and-, and the Yeah, way I understand. Like I said, people on the outside looking in won't understand, I mean. Right. But he the type boy, he deal with a lot of white people and big white people, like you know what I'm saying? He never, he always stay true to whatever he believes. But how can somebody have a problem with that? I mean, that's somebody that got too much time on their hands to worry about. If he say he's going to leave his money with his son, I mean. Well, he was talking about being a boss and not basically working for somebody oh. and being your own boss. Uh -huh. And a lot of people, they're kind of, the, the scales are kind of tilted because people don't really know. Some people are siding with him. Others are saying, you know, Dame's crazy. He don't know what he's talking about. And it's a big old debate that was going on online. Oh, yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah. yeah but, um, I, well, I don't want to be biased because that's my man. But I'm going to say... Um, if he says something like that, I mean, I don't see how it will bother somebody. If you feel like, all right, I work for somebody, that's fine, because everybody can't be their boss, especially not at first. But he's probably saying you should want to be your boss, even if you can't be your boss right now. You so that should be your goal to be your boss, your own boss. I mean, because you can be your own boss in anything you do, even if you got to start small, even if you got to start working for somebody else. 
I mean, that's how I would look at it. You know what I mean? But you saw it. I mean, you were there. You know, yeah. So you saw how he conducted business. Yeah, man. He, he used to be, he, he made a lot of stuff happen. I remember Jay-Z was rapping. He could focus just on rap because Dang was taking care of the business. You know what I'm saying? Taking care of the business. You know what I mean? And I'm glad, I'm glad you said that because I had, I had a debate with somebody. Mm-hmm. And they was like, you know, that Dang party too much. And no. Jay was really the business no. behind it. That's why he ended up being the president of no. Def Jam. The only reason he became the president of Def Jam because the rapper is more famous. The rapper got more money because he's doing the shows. He's getting features. A manager might get 20% of that. You know what I'm saying? But the rapper is the person that the fans know more. The fans love. You got more leverage because you're the you're the product. He the product. And then he was the top rapper. Ain't like he just was a rapper. That's Jay-Z. Like it's like it's not like it's like Michael Jackson almost. You know what I mean? He was the Michael Jackson of the early 2000s. Like I mean, really the Michael Jackson. It wasn't he's not a regular person. So it don't matter if he party, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like Dame, when it started, was the reason Rockefeller took off. Jay, like they was the perfect group. Them, you know, Biggs had the money, you know, Dame, it's the business, Jay-Z was right. I mean, they was the, I think they was perfect. I mean, that's bad that they split up, but you know, Dame, Jay-Z felt like he wanted bigger things. That's all. I mean, it's simple. Jay-Z wanted bigger, be by himself and do bigger things. And he did it. I mean, because I mean, he's super big. I mean. But it ain't got nothing to do with Dane Party and Dane was on his business. I seen how he would do business. He'd do 20 different businesses. I see him have nightclubs, clothing line, records, this, that, groups in London. I mean, I seen him with my own eyes. Like, I mean, talking about doing a million things at one time. I seen it. Trust me. I mean, to shoot movies, directing it, all, all kind of stuff. I mean, so, you know, Dane definitely was a super hustler. So, you know, partying, he party when it was party time. You know what I mean? He'd be in the office in the morning. You know what I mean? But people ain't going to see that because the internet wasn't out then. <laughs> you know what I mean? It wasn't on Instagram. It wasn't on Twitter. It wasn't on Facebook. It just was word of mouth. So, mm. so with the internet age, do you think it's much easier for artists today or it's harder because everybody's on there and they're able to do it? <sighs> well... See, at the t- back in the day, you made a lot of money off selling CDs. Even if you was an independent, like you could sell, now you can't really sell CDs because everything's free on the computer. But at the same time, you can become famous faster. Like you can become real famous fast and you just got to make money off shows. So it's like, it's good, it's negatives and it's positives with it, you know what I mean? But, you know, I think it's a lot of negatives with the internet, but, you know, it's a lot of positives with it too. The internet put a lot of stuff out of business. I mean, and then that made stuff seem like, you know, not, not as real. You know, you don't even got to go meet a girl no more. You could just go in there and just try to fake it, pick pictures next to a car or something like that. I mean, it's just like, you know, a lot of f- fake, crazy stuff going on. But at the same time, it helped a lot of people. And we made a lot of people rich. So, of course, know what you're doing for a living and see if you like the internet or not. You know what I mean? Okay. So, in reference to the tour, you know, we're in Chicago right now. You guys are on on tour. How's that been going so far? And what can we perfect. expect tonight? I've been going perfect, man. We're going to kill it tonight. I mean, we're going to see how they react. I mean, of course, we're going to kill it. I mean, we, this is what we do. You know what I mean? We've been doing this for a long time, so that's nothing. We ain't even worried about that part, you know what I mean? But it was fun being with everybody and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So, you know, everything positive, man.